you know, it's these shoes that I want or whatever. Can you get them for me? Period. I just asked them. So these should have been the red flags that I feel like I think just went right over my head. How can I put it? Um, it smelled like badussy. I was like, I got a whole Rick Ross belly and that wasn't there. Like in the summertime, it just, it wasn't there. Can I lick the lollipop? Throw the whole hookah away cause this nigga had me Welcome to my channel. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Brie on TV where I am your host, Smoking Hookah, about to dive into this horrendous story tea. Brie. do I start like how do I how do I like dive into this story tea because this shit is all over the place first of all I still can't figure out like why I even allow for this guy to fly me out like I think that's I think that's the thing that's getting to me <sighs> Brie why did you go because I didn't for the need weekend. to go I could have stayed my ass right here in Atlanta, Georgia and took care of business, but no. So that's how we are sitting here today discussing a story tea with Brie. So as you all know, any story tea, story time that I do here on my channel, I'm always going to have hookah and that's just on period. <laughs> but I definitely encourage anybody watching this story tea to um, fire them up some hookah. Mighty Freeze would be my flavor or shisha of choice. So that way you can just kind of catch the vibe. Basically, I got flued out. Bitch trying to get flued out for the weekend. But it was gone wrong. And it was the worst flued out experience that I've ever had or have ever encountered. And I've been flued out before. I've been flued out overseas. And I've been flewed out domestically. But as of recently, I've been flying my own stuff out. You can run back a few of my episodes to when I flew to Ghana. I paid for my own ticket. I have no problem flying myself out. So to even give you like some history on how me and this gentleman, we're going to call him Philly. We're going to call him Philly because that's exactly where he resides and that's exactly where he flew me out to. To i work in the nightlife industry and so he popped bottles with me so that's how me and philly met he tips me really well and after um our encounter he was just i guess trying to spit game is what it's called i basically had shut it down but he was so persistent i was just like fuck it. <laughs> for real, for real. One thing that I will say is me and Philly don't have nothing in common. He was just so persistent in liking me. And I really wasn't sure why. Because I'm like, dude, I'm not even really like, I'm not really even giving you no vibe for you to vibe back to feel like I'm your type. The only thing that I would say that me and Philly had in common is that we both were Greek. Within the first like three days of us even knowing each other, and I know this is gonna sound crazy, but this is just real life, and this is a real raw and uncut story he would bring. So it's like I knew I didn't like him, but because he was always in my face, trying to take up a lot of my time by FaceTiming me, texting me here and there, how was work, yada yada yada. I was just like, she like, you know, it's these shoes that I want. Or whatever can you get them for me period i just asked him and at first he was a little hesitant because of his eyes and of course me i'm just like 
you don't get them or not. <laughs> he tells me that he's going to get them in the morning. Basically, he waited like two and a half hours in line to get me these pair of shoes because Louis Vuitton at the time, or I think still to this day, they only are allowing a certain amount of people in their store because of COVID. So he literally did all of that to get me these pairs of shoes. And then he sent me the picture as a confirmation, letting me know that these shoes were on my way to my address. And I was just like, oh, like, you know, like, okay, cool, okay. He went out of his way to get me these specific shoes. I kind of feel like that's the reason why I felt guilty enough to allow him to fly me out. I don't know. I basically gave him the leisure of planning the itinerary. And him was like, So these should have been the red flags that I feel like I think just went right over my head because that's exactly what happened. He was being real cheap when it came down to booking my flight. He had full responsibility in making sure our accommodation was booked. So he kept sending me options like, do you want to stay here? Do you want to stay there? And I should have known from the price point of when I like looked at it that that also was a red flag. But I was looking at it while I was at work. So nothing really was clicking other than me just letting him know, no, I don't like it. No, I don't like it. No, this ain't my vibe. This fool had the nerve to tell me he wanted, he wanted me to model in the shoes that he got me. Naked. Throw the whole hookah away because this nigga had me. Philly took about 45 minutes to an hour to come and retrieve me from the Philadelphia airport. <laughs> what? <laughs> Materialistic things like what you drive in, um, kind of like what you got in your closet, how you be stepping when you step out type ordeal, we never really discussed. So I'm standing, you know, with my luggage and you know, I'm looking cute. Like I'm looking like I'm getting flued out. So I'm standing outside the Philadelphia airport in transportation. <laughs> How can I say this without like trying to seem like I'm just, you know, whoop the whoop driving in a range and stuff like that. So I'm trying to figure out like, how can I say it? But I just want to be blunt. Like, I just really want to be blunt with y'all. This nigga car was so beat up that I didn't even recognize it. He's like parked less than like five inches away from me. And I just do not recognize that that's him or his car. Y'all, I don't even know what I was waiting on to pick me up. But whatever he pulled up in and however he was looking, want it. He pulled up in basically some hoopty. I feel like that's a hoopty. I feel like when people say a hoopty, that's what a hoopty is. Oh, this nigga got a whole rick ross belly and that wasn't there like in the summertime it just it wasn't there when i tell you along the lines of me being shocked and then really like disgusted slash turned off like i really should have just done an about face and just headed back the fuck to atlanta and when he seen me he gave me like this hug of some shit that was like in the romantic movies and i was just like Relax. <laughs> Emotions of how he felt to see me, they just wasn't reciprocated. Like, I just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. I just like, I was in Philly, but I feel like I just mentally wasn't in Philly. He looks like he lives in his vehicle. Like you just had packages everywhere. So my luggage was sitting on top of the packages. This dude was really like just blasting his base. Like it just really made me feel like I'm like this thought that got flewed out. Just I don't know. I can't hear him, weekend. but he's trying to have conversation and catch up. Like turn down your music, okay? Because first of all, you're blasting old, like just out of date music. So it's really nothing for the outside to hear. It's, it's really not. And I'm like, so what do you want to do? Because you told me you had the itinerary taken care of. He was like, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Um, I want to eat. 
let's go somewhere and go to brunch because that's what I do. I go to brunch. He's like, where do I want to go? <laughs> where do I want to go? I think I've never been to Philly. Like I told you, I didn't have time to look up anything. You were supposed to take care of that. The fact that he didn't know where to go to brunch, it just didn't sit right with me. How do you live in an area where you don't know where it's acceptable to go to brunch? You dropped the ball on that. Let me Google some stuff real quick. So we ended up settling for um, this like really like people brunch type spot. I have two days here in Philly. I really do want to make the best out of it. So anytime I go to brunch, anytime I go to a restaurant, I really want it to hit. You know, so that way I can like take cute pictures, I can recommend it, I can put it on like my Instagram story, things of that nature. So after brunch, I reach, I tell him like, yo, let's reach out to the Airbnb host so that way we can check in early or see if we can check in early. And he's just like, yeah. He was like, let me hit up my roommate so that way my roommate can give me the um can give me more information about the airbnb i gotta scoot up just a little bit so we can have a talk right now um okay so he has a roommate and obviously his roommate booked the airbnb why didn't you book the airbnb and why like why is your roommate booking the airbnb like i i don't even want your roommate knowing about me like what is tea? So that was like two big bombs that were just dropped on me at one at like one time. With me flying out to Philly to begin with, I wasn't going to be staying at his spot, even if he did have his own spot. So I, I want to say that's the reason why it was never really communicated, like where you stay or anything of that along that line, because you're flying me out to Philly and point blank period, whatever the situation is, I'm not staying wherever you lay your head. Cause I just don't know Philly like that. And I don't know who you've been dealing with in the past. Like, I just don't want to be in your environment. Along from everything else that I told you leading up to this point, this is the re like, this is the, this is like the main point as to like, I'm just over it. I'm over him. Like, this is where everything really just went wrong. We pulled up to the Airbnb. It was a townhouse. Everything was stuck together. The um, stairs said, <laughs> Room A, go up. Room B basically is on the main level. And room C, you have to go down the stairs. Um, I've never stayed anywhere with a shared common space or shared anything. I don't do hostels. I don't do anything shared because I'm not a shared type of person. Like I need my own space. And I thought that's what he would have thought too. And the kitchen looks like, I don't know, it looks like a kindergarten's class because it's like everything is labeled. At this point, he's going to get my luggage. I go back outside and tell him, don't even get the goddamn luggage. Like, you can leave the luggage in the car. Like, everything was coming off rule, but at this point, like, I really don't care because I need to figure out why you or your roommate booked a fucking private room in this three-story Airbnb without really informing me or asking me what I felt about it and so forth. Like, I'm literally feeling like I'm being set up. That's that's exactly how I'm feeling. And, I, and then I'm just thinking, like, is it because you're too cheap to book a fucking um, entire, like, Airbnb? Like, is is that what it is? Or he was like, you know what you said, calm down. He was like, let me know what you think about it. I can't see it, but you haven't even seen it yet. I was like, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I don't care anything about this goddamn Airbnb. I want to leave. So we're walking downstairs, like, literally like a terrace level, aka dungeon, he unlocks the room and when he open <laughs> when he opens the door to the room where we were supposed to be staying, how can I put it? Um, it smelled like Badussy. It, it looked like the Airbnb host just like remade up the bed. It smelled like Badussy plus weed. Like, just get me out of this situation for I <laughs> fucking burn this whole fucking Airbnb up. Cause at this point, when I tell you I was pissed. I was pissed. You've got to be kidding me. Like, you think I'm a joke. Because that's basically what, what the situation is. You think I'm a joke. And that's cool. So I walk back upstairs. And at this point, I booked the first hotel 
that basically a like suited my type of accommodation with living because what what i'm not gonna do is i don't care who's flying me out i don't care what the situation is i don't care what group trip i'm going on if i don't like the situation that i'm being put in whether that's sleeping or so forth i'm just simply going to remove myself from the situation yes i said myself because you know i just wasn't sure if he wanted to stay in the accommodation the badusty slash weed smelling airbnb unit that he booked or whatever so i just know brianna was a stand there period Actually, you had two jobs the itinerary for philly and the second job was to book the accommodation and you dropped the ball on both so at this point i literally want nothing to do with you but because i'm in philly for two whole days and we're only on the first day i'm just like you know what brianna you're just gonna have to make do of the situation because he purchased your flight. You didn't purchase a flight. So you really can't just book a flight back to Atlanta. Okay, so y'all just let me know in the comments what you would have done in that situation. It was at that very point that I knew like, I think whatever... Whatever thoughts you had sexually of touching me or seeing me, I don't know, fantasizing about me and my curves, whatever you had going on in that brain of yours, <laughs> you better do that shit right now because, like, ain't none of that. Ain't none of that. Ain't none of that. Ain't none of that going down in Philly. Ain't none of that. And it was a high rise. I check in. I ended up getting a travel agent discount, which is the perk of being a travel agent. So they end up upgrading my room just because it's COVID. So not many people are staying at hotels at the moment. 14th floor. And we had the view of the city. It was just really nice. It was just more of my liking. Like my type of accommodation is obviously 10 times different than your style of accommodation. And it's very obvious and like we just like we just we're not here like we're not here my friends the glass um shower it had like marble um marble tiles it was really really luxury this fool had the nerve to say hey, we break in the shower <laughs> we're gonna break in this shower who gonna break in this shower my nigga because you're not touching me <laughs> my nigga I'm gonna look up some places that we can go smoke hookah. We can have a nice so, view. We ended up going to um, this really nice spot. It was like kind of really low key. And that's what I kind of wanted to do. I wanted to keep it low key because I really just didn't want to be seen with buddy. That's another thing. And it's just so funny because while we were at the lounge that we were at, he kept trying to offer me alcohol. And I'm just like, my boy, like, I'm not drinking. Like, I want to be as sober as possible. So that way, if you try anything, like, my nigga, I'm one up. Like, I'm on game. This is the first night of us literally having to sleep in the same bed, unfortunately. So he should have knew what was up. I shouldn't have had to say anything like, nah, we not doing this and that. You should have known from when I said that I was going to shower by myself and be in my zone, listening to my music and so forth. And from when I went to sleep in my hoodie. My hoodie, my glasses, and my braid down. What wig? Not on my head when I'm going to sleep. He waited for that exact moment for us to stop talking about politics. Two acts. Can I lick the lollipop? I'm real good at playing dumb. I'm like, the lollipop? I don't even eat candy. Like, what? The girl laying next to you, a.k.a. me, booked this room because you dropped the ball. Like, why do you even feel like you deserve her lollipop? You deserve to be touched, kissed, held, you know, head rubbed on, any of that, massaged. But I just personally feel like what's understood shouldn't have to be explained. And that's just how I was looking at it. It's understood that I booked this room because you dropped the ball. So what should have to be explained is you thinking that you still going to touch me or we going to do anything along that, you know, sexually lines. He just going to get blocked, period. So we about to do that together. We just hope that, you know, we just never come into contact ever again. But if we do ever come into contact, it's going to be a cordial. Hey, what's up? How you been? Okay, cool. 
Like, it's going to be no hard feelings. Like, yes, I took a major L in that situation. But, I mean, you know, you live, you learn, you're put in situations that aren't always going to be the best. So, if you have made it to the end of this crazy, ghetto, wow, story to with Brie, I want to say thank you for tuning in to another episode of Brie on TV where I'm your host, Brie, who lives a crazy lifestyle. I think I'm going to open up a little bit more about a lot of situations that I've been dealt with, that I've been put in. If it's love that you need, you can't take it from me, cause I'm the one who's giving it up. So definitely subscribe like this video if you liked it if you didn't like it then definitely let me know in the comments what you would have done differently or what you didn't like about this video and you've also been flewed out before whether it's been a good situation or a bad situation or if you've been put in a situation similar to mine then i definitely want to hear from you in the comment section below as well please let me know i'm not the only one who's been put in a crazy situation like this one here hey.